you're looking around everywhere, everywhere on YouTube, and you don't see it. There isn't any in television content. What do you do? You came to the right place. Smack them up. I got you today. I'm going to show you my in television cartridge that I got from Evercade. Not only that, we'll talk about the Keemstar hypothesis. episode of Gen X Gamer. Guys, I've always told you that, you know, I thought Soldier Boy was a great, a great new CEO for Intellivision, or at least a brand new owner of the company, but now we have another player. If you follow me on Twitter, uh, you'll see that I made a comment to Keemstar, because he's been voicing some interest in the Intellivision Amico, believe it or not. He talked about it with Tipster, he was in um, Tony's uh, uh, chat, it appears. And uh, he was talking about it on, on Twitter, you know? And I said, you can get it on 10 cents on the dollar right now. <laughs> and that's the only way you should invest in this company right now. But he would be a good fit, believe it or not. He's got the money, according to him, he's got FU money all over the place. That's his own words. And he's into crypto, right? And he's into video games. He even wanted to start a video game museum. So I think it'd be a great match. But the reason I wanted to talk about this, not because I think this is actually probable or plausible, you know, anything can happen, of course. But if you were to invest in a company like this, what would you do? Let's look at it from a business perspective. Here we have a company that has failed to meet its goal, that has um, underperformed, not once, not twice, but three times and more. <laughs> They just can't get it right. But is there any value in the company? Not, not as it stands, not for the money they want, right? I, I told you before, the best thing for this company would be to BK it and start over. They have a new announcement coming next week and you know, anything's possible. In this world we live in, anything can be fixed with money, I'll tell you the truth. And if you get a big enough investor in there, he could actually turn things around. But let's say you were that investor. Right? And you had to buy this company for A, B, or C reasons. Believe it or not, there's investors out there that invest in companies that are going broke because they need a write-off. It's, it's business. Believe it or not, that's what happens. They take the best out of parts out of the company, they make money out of that, and then they BK the rest. Now, this is something you would want done before you purchase the company because there's too many liabilities here. You have, you know, the over... <laughs> That overwhelming lawsuit of what is it a million and a half dollars whatever it is you have uh, you know these uh, loan sharks working at the company given <laughs> imagine having loan sharks <laughs> as the principals in the company um, you need to get rid of those things right and you want to get rid of that rid of that horrible horrible overhead that they have those are the type of things you want to do before you purchase a company like this and you want to make sure that they do it. You don't want to be stuck with those liabilities. You don't want to be stuck with having you be the one that has to fire all these people, give them compensation and all that stuff. No, they have to do it before you pay. And they're in a bad spot right now. You know, you really could get, get them at a great price if you pushed hard enough and if they're desperate enough. And as you can tell by the latest fundraiser, I mean, desperate would be a good way to describe the situation because why would you spend that much time on a fundraiser that you could tell from the start was not going to go well? It doesn't matter what you wrote on there. If you didn't raise at least half your money in the first three days, that thing was dead in the water. And the, you know, the fact that they kept on at it, wasting their time talking in those forums, really tells you how badly they needed that money. Now, does that mean that they don't have any more access to money? Yeah, but they, they can borrow more money, but it would be insane at these rates. So if you're the person that's gonna be investing, you wanna get rid of all those bad debts because the only thing that's worth in this company, anything, Keemstar, pay attention, is the licenses, right? It's the, the properties. That's really what you want because there's more value in software. Software can you know you own those IPs you can do many different things and put them across platforms and you can generate passive income 
for you know less money than making a console. That really is it. Now, if your preference is to make a console, then you need to get console experts, right? And that's why you want to get rid of the old personnel, right? Nothing against anybody there. Okay, this is just in general. What I'm saying is, if you're going to purchase a company that has failed, they failed for a reason, right? And if you get an independent auditor in there, they'll probably tell you, listen, this department over here did not perform. This department over here didn't perform. As far as PR, the t PR is terrible. I mean, the, the, the previous CEO didn't know anything about PR. He needed professional help, did not hire it. And that happens to a lot of new businesses, guys. This is not uncommon, especially for uh, sole proprietors. It's something that happens frequently. They think they have the right answers to everything, but you can't. What happens in a new business, especially in a single ownership, you take on many hats. But just because you have to put them on doesn't mean that you're good at that job, right? I, you know, I'm not a, a, <laughs> a rocket scientist. I just can't say, you know what, I really like rockets. I'm going to start a rocket company and I'm going to declare myself a rocket scientist, right? It's the same thing with the CEO. Just because you own the company and because you're a president, yada, 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 doesn't make you a good CEO. It takes a certain set of skills. And it looks like that happened more than once here in this company, and that's the reason the books are the way they are. The PR is bad because, again, there's no professional help, but now you have two toxic members of in the principal group, one of them being the previous CEO, just because he couldn't, you know, he couldn't navigate the today's world of the internet properly. And now you have number two, Phil Adam, which has been linked just too closely you know, to, to the Coleco Chameleon, unfortunately. So both of them are toxic as far as, um, you know, PR purposes. It's just not going to be a good look. Uh, so you would be crazy trying to raise money with those things behind you. You need to wipe the slate, the slate clean and move forward. And you have to do it across the board. When you have something that didn't work, there's no point in keeping it together. It didn't work for a reason, right? but you do want those IPs because you may hire those out to other people and do it the way it should have been done from the beginning. Again, does it mean that the, the company could fail right now altogether? Without money, of course. I mean, they've said it themselves. But if you are an investor, those are the things you want to see. You want to buy the IPs at the lowest price possible, get rid of those awful, awful um, you know, loans have those principals take their money back where a very minimal interest rate or just a minimal fee. Unfortunately, some of those have been paid already. You can renegotiate those debts. There isn't anything that you're going to be able to do about that lawsuit, but that's probably going to go against the LLC. Maybe B in the BK it can be taken care of unless they give a personal guarantee. Who knows? Right? If anything, maybe these people can break even and you can get yourself a great deal on some properties, on some intellectual properties. But to tell you the truth, these people could do that themselves, right? These people have enough money that they can move on just with the IPs and, and move forward. So maybe there's a little wiggle room for them, but as far as you and as an investor, you wanna make sure that all these albatross contracts are gone, that you don't have to deal with any of the toxic personnel that you, they get rid of all the overhead and you make specific demands of what you're purchasing. I'm purchasing the IPs and that's it. Every other liability is yours. You guys deal with it. This is what I'm giving you a check for. And then you can move forward. That's about it. Guys, we live in a world where a lot of things can be fixed with money. This, believe it or not, is actually one of them. There's companies that go bad all the time. The Amico brand is stained. I think in television as a brand still has some uh, stain power and you can tell because this cartridge right here I don't know if you remember it sold out it really did the, when I tried to order I had to order it from somebody else because it was sold I had to order from Amazon because it sold out right away on Best Buy and I waited a long time for it I know people got it before I did so there is still some niche markets where you can make money with those but you can even make more money on cell phones. Even with these games, believe it or not, people buy all kinds of stuff. And Generation X is still a large population. There's money to be made. It's just not anywhere, 
near the, the current management of this company. But hopefully, hopefully, somebody will step in and save it. But I don't know. I don't know. Will it be Keemstar? Will it be Soldier Boy? Whoever it is has to be a brave soul. I will catch you on the next one. Take care. New videos every Monday and Sunday. Thank you for joining me on another episode of the Gen X Gamer. Remember to like and subscribe, click that notification bell, and remember, never ever be afraid to be happy. I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.